led by Madam Winnie and Madam Mary, I extend to you my condolences. All of us who have come to say bye-bye to our good friend, uh, Kolale, this should have been a great day for us to say great things that Muga has done as we celebrate. But as somebody has said, Muga has gone too early and too quickly. I'm here as in two capacities, in my own capacity as Francis Adwell, and also in the capacity as a vice chancellor, because I cannot, uh, probably there are things that um, I would have not been able to say here that I might say if I was not a vice chancellor. So first of all, I consider myself to represent vice chancellors of public universities um, in their entirety today. Muga Kolale is not just a colleague from the university. He became a friend. You have read on the, in the book about Muga Kolale that has been given to us today. He was involved in WASU negotiations from 2006 to 2021. And in all those negotiations, I participated. And many of you who are there, Musalea, you are here, Sami Kubarsu, we were sitting with you together, Sami, I don't know where you went. Uh, Sami Kubarsu, you will recall the early negotiations of 2006. Even then, Kolale was in charge. I was always on the other side, and I helped in many ways in doing the calculations that resulted in the salaries that we would go and pay staff, together with uh, officials and colleagues from UASU. Kolale was therefore always on the other side, and I was always on the other side. Of course, not myself alone. Through this, that is a span of 15 years, I got to know this person very well. Many people saw Kolale on TV as somebody who looked very harsh and somebody who looked, so I might hide somebody mentioned, emotional. Kolale was never emotional. That was just his way of expressing his point. But he could be harsh. But the most interesting part about this person Kolale, outside the negotiation on the table, was a very, very polite person, extremely polite. Those who didn't have a chance to interact with him at that level might not know. And we used to say, in those negotiations, when we go in, things can be very hard and very hot. When we come out, we take tea together. And during tea time, we would all laugh and we would tell people, those tables we have in there are put for us to bang as we talk. But the final decision will come out when we are talking during tea time and outside those negotiations. Charles Mukwai, you know all of that. And that Kolale was able to do that. Many people would not probably uh, agree because on the surface, he was an extremely harsh person. But you would sit with him, and sometimes we would agree that this is how we are going to tackle the negotiations today. And we were able to bring the universities to the level we have brought them in today. What is the legacy of Kolale? Good Kenyans, I want to tell you, if Uwasu did not happen in 2003, and I have seen it, I've been in university administration for a very long time, and in 2003, I was in the middle of it. You want me to go this way? In 2003, I was in the middle of it. In fact, my first interaction with Uwasu was in 1993, when the first attempt aborted, but I will not speak about that today. If Uwasu did not happen in 2003, it is difficult to imagine what would have happened to our universities. The universities had come to a point where 
Staff were living in droves. People were leaving to go and work in other countries. And people were even leaving the university to go and involve themselves in petty trade. You can imagine a university professor leaving classroom to go and organize how to sell Omena from Home Bay to Nairobi. We had come to that level. Then Uwasu came in. Uwasu happened because there were people with vision, there were people with commitment, there were people who were brave enough to challenge the system at the time. And Kolale was one of them. This will remain his legacy. The fact that we have our universities at the level they are today, in spite of the many difficulties we have, if Uwasu did not happen, I don't know where we would be. And therefore, this great man has done a great job for this country. Kolale is leaving a record of patriotism, of commitment, even when many people might have not appreciated because many people saw him as a problem because he was pointing out things that they did not want to be pointed out. But today, many of us can look back and say that he did something for this country. I would like to leave it there. I am happy that I was able to speak after the minister. He didn't warn me that he was going to ask me to do something for the family as well. And since he has said and he has indicated what he wants me to do, I would like to tell the family that I'm also going to confer with you. And in my little capacity as vice chancellor, I would like to do something for yourself, especially because Kolale has made the universities to be what they are. It, is, it will be a pity if his children are roaming the streets and many people he supported to be where they are today, have their children living under a roof. So I will confer with you, and since the minister was gracious enough to call uh, Simeon Nodera here to say that he should come and take your telephone numbers, I also have my PA, so I'm going to brag, and I will ask him, he should also take your telephone numbers, Cosmos. Thank you very much, everybody, good people. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Adol, a very honest, transparent, and committed member of UASU.